So the meditation we will be doing today, it, it's similar to what we did uh, in the beginning of the pandemic at the time uh, Julian was talking about the need to um, to to anchor and download that um, advanced human being because the advanced human being has advanced immune system. So that's why we did it at the onset of pandemic to to work with the advanced immune system as as a way to protect us. And now in the latest lecture, he was talking about it again, and he was talking about that the situation on the planet is totally out of control. It can be solved with the current level of consciousness. And as you may know, Albert Einstein said at one point, you can't solve a problem from the level it was created. You have to expand your consciousness. So that's why we're going to do that again to... Um, feel to give it a form what is the uh, high higher evolved human being uh, give it as much visualization as possible which is what is the difference between this work we do today and the one we will be doing when um, Roth is a co-host because then it will be totally different we just go into the present we don't work with any higher technologies. We don't work with higher dimensions. So uh, it's seven past one. So I suggest we uh, mm, we start. So <clears throat> so because of this uh, duality in how to present this work. We can bilocate, we can go anywhere we, we want to. We can we could do this work even by bilocating to Starship Athena and going to the auditory where is a big screen and we could be visualizing, projecting it all on the big screen while all the uh, beings on the ship are there with us. We can go to the North Pole, we can stay here, never go anywhere. So, um, I thought that this is such a big topic um, which affects everybody on the planet. So, for that reason, I would like to bilocate to the North Pole. And the plan is so that uh, I will do the opening uh, meditation where we do some preparatory clearing and then we bilocate to North Pole where we work with uh, the ascended masters around the galactic medicine wheel. We create this sad form and then Tim will take it and download it into the new sphere into the planetary and collective unconscious and subconscious, maybe even into the uh, North Pole Meridian. So the idea that Tim will do that is because, as you know, um, whoever leads the meditations gathers all the energy and runs it through his or her body. And because my physical body was a little wobbly in the past few months, uh, I said, well, we give it to Tim. And what's beautiful is about it that, you know, if you want to manifest something, you start with visioning, birthing it. And we work with the divine feminine, let the divine feminine conceive it, birth it, come forth. And then the divine masculine takes over and executes it. So that's the plan. And then at the end, we take all the accumulated energy and apply it to the hurricanes and the fires. Let's be here and now in present time.
healing game. Fully present. Connecting with the, with the very core of Gaia, Mother Earth, bringing her energies up, opening the crown chakra and connecting to the sun, great central sun, source, aligning ourselves with Starship Athena, with Juliana. Expanding into the four directions. Connecting with the four elements. And the core of it. We are in the zero point, in the point of singularity. Feel into the fire within. Breathe into it. Expand it to the shape of cosmic egg. Fill the entire egg with your own light. You are emitting your very own light. And we call forth our higher selves this golden white light. God's presence. And we reflect on all the incarnations on planet Earth. It is very likely that we have worked on our self-mastery in many, many lifetimes, in many, many forms. Before the incarnation, we enter it as the master within. But we chose to forget who we are. But the core of who we are, the light of who we are, was always there, deep within. And so with incarnation in after incarnation was working with spirit, connecting with the source, with the intention to remember, remember who we are. And so we entered into these different schools and, and teachings and practices, made variety of vows and oaths. Maybe we have been even neglecting our physical bodies or punishing the physical bodies. All that is in the past. And this lifetime is it's a top life because we are the ascending life. So let's cast the light of our higher selves onto all these experiences which are surrounding us, us now in the now moment. And let's simply erase return to light that which was misqualified, misunderstood on our journey of finding ourselves once again. We could say, let's forgive it, but ultimately there's no need for forgiveness because we are love, we are on a journey, we didn't make any mistakes. We, are, we have entered this school, this classroom willingly because 
we knew that our soul appreciates every experience without judging what is good or bad. It simply is an experience. And so we are on an experiential journey. And now we are basking in the God's presence, in the light of our higher selves. Making our own, all that we have learned, which was good, full of value, valuable, and which is stored in our DNA. It is in there. All we are asked to do is to remember, to bring it forth, to activate it. So in the physical do, uh, DNA, we have all these experiences from all these lifetimes of searching for light within. And our higher selves, our divinity brings the um, divine DNA. And they are now merging, dancing together. So we are gathered here today with intention to feel into or experience this process of awakening of the master within, remembering the Christ within. And our intention is to share it with the larger collective and we pray that whatever may unfold here today is for the highest good of all involved. And we breathe deeply, slowing our breath, going deeper and deeper within, into the place of stillness and nothingness. Divine Mother of all life, take us deep within so we can be born anew. From this stillness, from this nothingness, everything is born, even the light. See your own light emerging. We are emerging, the master is emerging. The divine human being is arising. As phoenix arising from the ashes, as butterfly leaving the cocoon. Welcome, this divine human being. It is now permeating every single cell of your body every inch of your cosmic egg. Feel into it. To feel into it means to experience it. Experience your divinity. And now we bilocate to the North Pole, to the Ring of Ascension. And as you may remember from one of the last lectures, the Ring of Ascension is now in the new sphere.
And here we are taking place around the galactic medicine wheel. And here we are greeted by, by many ascended masters. We welcome white buffalo calf woman and spirit fire. We welcome Isis and Saint Germain made, made their violet transmuting flame assist us to purify us and amplify our ability to work with energy. We welcome Green Tara We welcome the Hathors and the Star Nations. We welcome Mary Magdalene and Jeshua. Mother Mary. Our beloved Kuan Yin and her twin flame Babaji. And we also welcome all the seraphims and all the angels and archangels. Feel into the presence of all these beings. And there are many more arriving, many ascended masters, which we don't even know by names. They are all arriving, attracted by our noble mission. How does it feel to sit in presence of ascended masters? Our energy fields are blending. We are entangled. We are cohesive energy field gathered here with intention to birth the higher evolutionary human being to help humanity remember who they truly are within. So our energy fields are blending and we are taking on the qualities of these ascended masters. And are now in the middle of the medicine wheel We will create a sad form. Which we will co-create. And later download. So visualize this sad form as a sphere of light. As a hologram. And in that we see a human being. This human being is love. It's light. It's standing in a cosmic egg. It's connected to source and it's connected to the earth. It is an earth ascended master. 
We are ascending from Earth. This human being has open heart chakra, open third eye, and open crown chakra. It's connected with all life. Now visualize the DNA. There's the physical DNA and there is the higher dimensional DNA. And now let's go and emit a series of tones with our intention to activate the DNA both in ourselves and in this sad form we are co-creating. So go ahead and let's start doing some toning. You don't have to harmonize with me. Activating the codes in the DNA. And now visualize the brain stem and the place called the assemblage point where when we are in perfect alignment with who we truly are a valve opens up and this which we are intending to achieve, to birth the master within, to remember who we are and open up into the higher evolutionary being can unfold. Visualize this valve opening you may visualize the neutrons orbiting around the proton and making a shift in frequency And now please unmute yourselves and we will be taking turns speaking words using the sound to express what you see, what you wish to gift this vision we have of this human being. We will project it on it. So you can raise your hand and I will call on you. Tim, and please, once, you, once you're done, you say aho. And that way we need, we know you are done with your part and, and next one. And we can go around as many times it takes. Okay, Tim. The spirituality of the divine, 
Aho. Aho. Who's next? <clears throat> Francine, unmute yourself, please. Okay. We don't hear you. Understanding of being the wholeness of source. Ending of being the wholeness of source. The wholeness of source. What does that mean? Sources within us all and within this being. That it represents the source of all. So are you saying the realization that we are all source, that we are all source fields, that source is everywhere, omnipresent? Anything can be created. Again? Anything can be created. Yes. Umbrella. Absolute connection and harmony with everything that is. It's like a chameleon being able to just shape shift into whatever life moves through. Yeah, this inherent understanding that you are part of everything, that you are connected to everything, that you are one with everything and that you are in harmony with everything. Beautiful. Next. How about omniscience and omnipresent? Omniscience, all knowing. So the way I see this being is that doesn't need to do much thinking because it knows everything and it will know what it will need to know in the moment it needs to know. Mike, will you speak today? No? I have heard from Mary Magdalene, and she said and that um, we ask, ask to um, um, value the um, mystery of the unknown because um, we entered here as the master within and totally forgot everything. And that evolutionary journey of the soul, it is not possible to wake up to your master in one lifetime. It would be too much. So we are awakening slowly. And because we know that it is not possible to wake up in one lifetime, we can give us a slack and Enjoy the mystery, not be welcome the unknown. Tim? 
So as we uncover and remember ourselves, we are also open to the hidden knowledge that has not been given to us yet and that we are ready to receive. Yeah. So that is part of our higher evolution. Yeah. And higher being as yeah. we progress on this earth and through this ascension. Yes. Yeah. So this being is sovereign. It, it's able to discern what's for its highest good. So it doesn't need always to look for answers and advices from authorities or other people. It has the discernment. It knows what's for its highest good, highest, best. It's innocent. As a child, you know, if you remember how you played as a child, you would never worry about anything. You would always be in the now. You would never think about what you did yesterday. You wouldn't worry about what's, you know, what you're going to do today. As a uh, tomorrow as a child, you wouldn't do that. You would be totally in the now. So with the innocence comes that joy, lightness of being. I have a long list. <laughs> Of course, lives it it this being is um, love, and see everybody as love, see everything as love. So whatever is unfolding out there, it is what it is. We are in a holographic reality. It's not even real. Real. We are just projecting it. It's a classroom for our soul to evolve. So. Uh, this being would see any obstacles as an opportunity to grow. Amberlea? And this being speaks and speaks the language of tone and energy and vibration and understands symbols and all of their um, yes. word for it. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, yeah, because that's, that's the language of light, light language, language of light. The light is undefined and can't be translated into human languages. So that's why we are using all these forms of light language to express it into this reality. And, that's, and that will unfold uniquely for each of us. And that's a juicy journey, which takes courage and be absolutely fearless. You can't be shy. You can't worry about what anybody will think or feel about you. So this evolved human being has nothing to hide, would never want to hide, you know, I, I had this much in me, I, I used to hide in the past because I was ashamed of it. But once I start loving myself completely, there's no point of hiding it from others because once we fully activate, we are so telepathic, we can so feel into each other, you can't hide it anyway. Besides, there is nothing to hide because you didn't do anything wrong. <laughs> right? So it has, uh, you know, um, Juliana was talking about it, that once we evolve, 
um, the life will be less um, exciting because it will be balanced and harmonized. There won't be so many ups and downs as we are used to um, in, in the third dimension. So this divine master, he is um, uh, dignified. It has this presence of a royalty, um, calm, balanced. It's a, a, he or she uh, would be a good listener and first of all, all ability to listen to your own guidance. It's free of any addictions, any programs. And emit light, light. So imagine that we are in a gathering of people and there are ascended masters between us. These people will radiate light and they will have this radiant presence. You will be drawn to them and feel, it will feel so good to just sit in their presence. Simply because it feels good and energy fields are... Um, um, it has this Mona Lisa smile, all-knowing, because it's all-knowing, yet it can't afford to go and tell people what you should do, because you see that as our highest good, right? You have to let people be themselves, walk their own journey. So you just sit with Mona Lisa <laughs> smile and, and hold, hold the frequent. Oh. Just love them, love it as it is, love people just as they are, for who they are. Mike. I want to put it in a little different words. Um, mm -hmm. In 2012, people focused on the Mayan calendar change in the end of time and just simply restarted the calendar. But the Maya said other things that to me are more significant. One is that, that, um, we, we've been people of the corn. The Mayans said we're people of the corn and we were becoming people of honey, which you can look at many different ways, less, more plastic, more, um, more of a balanced color of the races. So people of the honey, uh, sweetness. They also added the fifth element, uh, we're used to earth, air, fire, and water, but they add a central element of love, fifth element. So that they really had massive changes that were coming and, and we're experiencing now, if you will. And to me, what we're talking about when we go back and talk about love, I mean, that's the basis of everything. There's an Apache saying it's that no matter what religion, it doesn't make any difference the name of the religion because they're all based on love. So it comes down to that. I mean, that that's really what, what I think, if we move into that, it, it means we don't have to, as you say, we don't have to do anything to people. Uh, let everything be as it is, stop, be still. Those are all different ways of saying the same thing, of, of uh, allowing, or surrendering to letting people be themselves. Yeah. Yeah, see everybody as brother and sister and pure love. Well, the Mayans, what they say is, I am another you. Yeah. So that's that's another way of saying, you know, we're all, we're all one. Yeah. Because we are one being expressing ourselves as many. Right. Once humanity really steps into that, must step out of the duality and separation. It's about pulling back out of the separation and realizing that we are the one being as the one self and which is love as who we truly are. Treat each other as love.
So this bean is shining and glowing. Wherever it goes, it takes its light with, we, with it, Affect, affects everything. Always know what to do, what to say, where to go. And understand that giving is receiving the, and that you are the creator and the creation. This, there's this interconnectedness of all life, which is sacred. So let's again close our eyes. And look at this form we have built. Seeing this human being with all these qualities we have been talking about. Seeing it as shining, radiant, innocent, magnetic being, being of love. Now see all the 12 crystals rising and they are emitting light which spirals move toward us, toward North Pole and here it's forming a holographic tree of life. It is a spiral of light. It is a DNA spiral of light which now totally envelops this image. And now, Tim, over to you. Continue to focus on the golden light surrounding the Omega Man Woman that is on the platform as we prepare to download this image into the unity consciousness and subconsciousness of humanity and Earth's newosphere. The 12 etheric crystals is helping us to accelerate our thought forms and our arcane power. On the platform in the center of our circle, See the image of the Omega Man Woman. Continue to place your thoughts of love, spirituality, knowledge, harmony, and balance into this evolution. The Omega Man Woman has a halo of light above the crown chakra and encases their body. As you continue to fill the Omega Man Woman with your thoughts and your energy, see the light increase in brightness, filling the crown chakra, the third eye chakra, the throat chakra, and the heart chakra. Feel your connection with the Omega Man, woman. And as we are in the ring of ascension with the being that encompasses Gaia and the earth, feel the arcane power of your thoughts of love spirituality, knowledge, harmony, and balance increasing and filling the Omega Man Woman. The 
The Omega Man Woman now aligns with the Ashkala Mirror. And we call down the light of the central sun to help us increase the arcane power that we are giving the Omega Man Woman. See and feel this connection as it fills the image on the platform in the center of our circle. The strong halo around the head and shoulders represents the expanded consciousness. While you keep this image in your mind, we are going to download the Omega Man Woman, Homo Omega, into the new sphere of humanity and into humanity's collective subconscious and unconscious. Humanity's unity conscious. One, two, three, now. See and feel Homo Omega descending and feel the energy of love balance, harmony, and spirituality being accepted within the collective subconscious and unconscious of humanity and the Earth's newest sphere. In closing, we give thanks to Giuliano and the Ascended Masters, the Four Directions, Gaia, and the Central Sun for being with us. We give special thanks to the 12 etheric crystals and the etheric crystals in Taos Mountain and of Fairhope and Santa Fe and Octurus for their support in our journey and mission this day. Know that as we are star seeds and healers in this dimension, you carry the light and thoughts that we worked with today within you, within your higher selves. As you walk upon this earth, you emit this Omega Man light to all those whom you meet. Your thoughts and existence in this dimension help the evolution of all within this city of light and the earth, bringing the evolution of harmony, balance, higher spirituality and knowledge. You help bring forth the Omega Man Woman. You are all blessed by your guides, the Ascended Masters, the Arcturians, and the Divine Creator. Walk in His, Her Light. Be His, Her Light.